Your Bibles, we're going to get in the Word. We are going to get in the Word. Psalms 27, 13 says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see the goodness of the Lord. You know, David was saying in his tough times, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. We are in a better situation than David was when he wrote this. We are seeing, I would say it this way, I remain confident of this. I am seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We are seeing, if your life has been transformed, just say, amen. If you've seen God do a miracle in your life, say amen. amen. I'm telling you, there are testimony after testimony. We need to get them on the stage because of, of not a God who used to do something, but a God who, or a God who's going to do something one day, but a God who's done something. I've experienced in my body supernatural healing, pa- a broken bone no longer broken, pain completely gone in an instant with the touch of God's love. We are experiencing God's goodness in the land of the living. Amen? Um, I want to read this to you. I wrote, this, I, I, I wrote these notes down. This is from the first message after they, um, whatever, they installed us in January. When this, the first, the, that service, um, other people preached. In the next service, I, I wrote this and just shared about the vision of the church. And I just want to reiterate it. We are building lives together to make fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. This church belongs to Christ. It is his church. Our number one job is to hear God's voice and respond to it. This is bigger than a service or a building. God wants to show his love through each of us all day, every day, making us bigger on the outside than we ever are on the inside, meaning the outside of this building. What God has done on the inside of you, he wants to do outside of you, outside of your realm. So when we say bigger, is it me? When we say bigger on the outside than on the inside, we we, we mean bigger. What we'll do from these seats as we leave these doors is going to be bigger than what you see happen in this room. Because your, your reach is far more than the, than, than the people in this room. We're bigger on the outside than we are on the inside. It's not about one man's teaching. This church is built to empower a whole family of believers to run the race set before them. We are fully devoted, all in, completely surrendered to Jesus Christ and to see his finished work in our lives. We're not collectors. We don't own people. We only steward what God entrusts us with. We are those who make a joyful noise to the Lord with gladness. You heard that a couple times this morning. We are walking porta temples of the Holy Spirit, dispensing his glory everywhere we go. We are lovers of God's word. We receive it and we speak it, and it accomplishes what it was sent out to do. The Holy Spirit is here because he lives in you, and you brought him with you everywhere you go. You brought him with you this morning. God has brought you here and he's placed purpose inside of you. We're not wanderers. We're a people of purpose. Revival is underway. We will see salvations, baptisms, sleeping Christians wake up, prodigals return, the sick healed. We declare this place to be disease-free and we rise up in unity as we let our light shine brightly to the glory of the Lord. Hold out your hands as big as you can. If you knock somebody, just say you're sorry. As wise as you can get them. And just repeat these words after me. We're going to just, man, this is, this is beautiful. This is a little inconvenient, but it's super beautiful. So wise as you can, we're going to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. Oh, uh, yeah. Now just, just tap, your, tap your shoulders, your chest, whatever it is. Just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Jesus, you are welcome here. I'm telling you, when we make room for him here and we make room for him here, we can't help but be changed. We can't help but be different. I want to, um, as we're sharing the vision of the church, I'd be super remiss if I told you all the amazing things we're going to do, which we're going to talk about tonight at 6 o'clock. Say, I'm there. We're going to talk about it tonight at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be incredible. But we, what, what God put on my heart is this. There is no chance we accomplish this vision if I'm the only one that owns it. Or if our staff is the only one that owns it. If our elders are the only one that owns it. The mission is accomplished as you own the vision of this church. As you own the vision of your life and what God is calling us to do. Because it's not this, it's not this like, hey, there's a thousand people in the church and then there's 600 people involved and, there's, and, it, and it gets smaller till there's some guy at the top who preaches. It's the opposite of that. Take that whole thing and flip it upside down. Take that whole thing and flip it upside down. And the vision of this church starts with you. 
And it starts with you have a call of God on your life. And, you have vi- and God has a vision for you. And that vision may be apartment complexes. That vision may be for the whole city. It may be beyond here. It may be for your family. It may be for your household. It may be for your son. But God's given you a vision, and he's showing you how to walk that vision out. What we're called to do as a church is, is, is reminds you, is to, is to recharge you, teach you how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then empower you to go do it. It's not collecting you to do a vision. Hey, guys, if, how horrible life would this be? You have the power of God living inside of you, and you're waiting for me to plan an event for you to use it. That's a, that's a crappy life. We're going to do events together because we're going to change the world together. But that, you, are, you guys aren't waiting for that, are you? You have... You, here's another reality that God showed me this week. You are being directed by a vision whether you know it or not. You may not have vision for your life and you're like, Tim, I'm, I'm just kind of wandering. You're not. You are being directed by a vision whether you like it or not. And if it's not the vision the Lord has for your life, then it's certainly a vision that other people have for you. I want you to think about this. I, I sat down with somebody this week and they said that most marketing is abandoning all age groups that aren't eight years to 12 years old. Because they've figured out that if you can market to eight to 12 year olds, you can have them for a life. If you, can, if you can grip them at the youngest age, then they'll not have a chance. Then they'll just be, it's likely that they'll be yours forever. If you're not living a vision committed to God, if you don't have vision for your life committed to God, then you are part of somebody else's vision committed to them. Disney, is, Disney has a vision for your kids. Does anybody doubt that? They have a plan, and, they have a, and they're unveiling it little bit by little bit. So they're like turning the heat up like frog legs. Like, and it's like, well, yeah, man, I'm telling you, there's, you'll get vision for your life, and it'll make you unsubscribe from some stuff. Because your vision for your kids can't be messed with, and you can't allow it to be messed with by other people. Your vision for, and I'm telling you, I, I grew up in a house that, um, if you're not careful the things that you'll allow in your house, if you don't have a tight vision, the things that you allow in your house will grab a hold of the people that you love the most. I'm trying to say this a different way. We, God knows that we have a need for a vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says when there's no clear, and this is in the Passion Translation, when there's no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, heavenly bliss fills your soul. <laughs> What's Vision Sunday, Tim? I can't wait to hear your vision. Man, when you, follow the vi- when you follow the vision of the Lord for your life, your heart is filled with heavenly bliss. I, it, what, let me just tell you, the plans... That it, you guys can all make plans for this church. And any plans made from here will not produce joy. They might produce happiness that's fleeting, but they won't produce joy that gives you strength. But God's plan empowers you. It, even, it, it, it gives you the, what you need to even get through the battle, to get through the adversity. Hey, Marvelous. You guys, if you guys have not... Seen Marvelous, you need to shake his hand. You have a better day because of it. When I was in Bible school, I was a young adult. Young adults, listen up. I, when I was, when I, was in, I just graduated Bible school, and I was at a church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the pastor came up to me, and out of the blue, I mean, I thought, like, I wasn't even done, really. I was kind of wrapping it up. It was May. And he said, hey, I know you're, like, finishing up. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, hey, I just want to let you know if, uh, if, if, if you can go and, and go get a job, but if the pastor calls me and he, he asks for a reference, I'm, I'm going to tell him I don't know you very well. I'm like, you don't know me very well. I've been here 40 hours. Of, like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, no, no. What I mean by this is like, I don't know. I can't guarantee what you're going to do in life. I can't, I don't know you. I mean, we've been around each other, but I don't know you very well. He said, I want to invite you into this. You can, you can go from here and you can say that this period of your life's done and you can go out into whatever's next, but I want to invite you into this. And, he, and the, the, the next thing he did invited me into a life-changing opportunity. He said, I want to invite you to spend five years here at this church. He said, if you serve for five years here at this church, 
I can promise you, I believe that God is going to do things through your life way further than I, I could ever ask or imagine in my life. Like the ministry that you will have will be greater than the ministry that I could do. When he was, he was painting this picture that Pastor Kit would paint, which is, uh, you'll, stand on my, if, if, if you can, you, you'll stand on my shoulders. And so I thought, I was like, great commitment. I prayed about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come in the, I'm going to do that. And so I thought it was like a great service. Like I'm going to give you, you, you know, when you're 22 years old, you're pretty proud of your talents. You're pretty proud of your life. You're like, man, this guy is getting something. <laughs> Any young adults in here feel like there's something? And what I realized was I got the greatest gift. While the rest of my friends were spinning out and trying to figure out what they're doing in life, I had a vision, and I was committed to that vision. I didn't know what, that, what those next five years would look like. He didn't say, if you do this, this, and this, and follow this checklist. He just said, if you commit your... And I committed myself to that path through prayer, and I just felt peace about it. And what happened was when everybody else graduated, I watched one, one by one, them search for their, their soulmate, them spin out looking for their career path, them being attacked by the enemy, telling them that even though they're only 23 years old, they were supposed to be further in life than they are right now. Them compare each other amongst themselves to where we couldn't, that our friend, my friends couldn't even celebrate the successes of each other because it only spoke to them the, what they didn't have. And I was just like a guy working at a church, not even working, I was just volunteering at a church. I knew I didn't have anything, but I knew I had a commitment. And that commitment guarded me. That vision in my life, in it, if I would have gone through with what everybody else was doing and I would have gone and worked at just some other church, I would have never met my wife. I would have never been here where I am today experiencing. I would have never gone to Malibu, California. I would have never experienced. I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, I hold Gracie in my arms and I think about that commitment I made to the pastor at 23 years old, 22 years old, whatever it was. Because it, it, it created the opportunities that I have today that I love and I'm, I'm incredibly blessed by. But we have to have vision for our lives. If, you, if you're wandering, you're in a super dangerous place. And so if, if you turn to, um, if you, there's, there's three things I want you to understand about vision today. I want you to understand that vision unlocks you. It unlocks you for God and with God. Vision unlocks you. Habakkuk 2, 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said this, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. It unlocks you to run after the things of God. I like this part that says that he may run who reads it. Well, who's going to read it? There's two people that's going to read it. You're going to read it. And you're going to run after the thing that God has for you. It's going to keep you from running after some other stuff. You know, if you don't have a vision, then what's up, what's your game plan for Friday night is anybody's, it's like, man, I, I want to live for God, but I keep making mistakes. You, you don't have a vision. I want to live for God, but I keep getting pulled into this culture. Do you have a vision for what God's doing in your life? Have you gone to God and received a vision? Because I'm telling you, if you have, then all of a sudden your, your plans on Friday nights, on Thursday nights, on Saturday nights, they are ordered by the Lord. So somebody calls you up and they say, hey, you want to you go hang out with me at shots and whatever? Like, you want to you go hang out with me at the bar? And you're like, man, that doesn't line up with the vision of my life. I mean, I don't know. Are we going to stand outside and tell people about Jesus? Because I'm down for that. But if we're going in there for us, then there's nothing in there for me. There's nothing in there that brings life, that breathes life. And all of a sudden you start to make these boundaries. A good friend of mine is going through a journey in his life, and he said, you know, I'm no longer serving a God for outcome. I'm serving a God because he's God. I'm not serving him for a situ- because I, I want a situation to turn out. I'm serving him for who he is, for what he's already done, not what he will do. When we have that vision in our life, what can't you go through? Does it mean that every situation is going to be perfect? No, it means you will have perfect clarity in every situation. You'll know, the, man, I got to get in the word. I'm going to, um, we're going to share a testimony tonight. I hope we have the opportunity to share this. Um, of a family that watched this family go through what it's gone through over the last six months. And it was a testimony to the goodness of God in their life. And they were able to battle through stuff. And they're watching from far. They're living in Oklahoma. 
not a part of our church. Just watching you as you, as, as you guys have continued to go through craziness and difficult times and have postured your hearts to, to worship God no matter what. And, as you, and, and it reminds me of this. Like, uh, that, that's why what, that scripture says when we have the vision, we run. But it also says this, that all that read it would run. Well, who else is going to read it? Those that are inviting you to the bar on Tuesday nights probably going to quit inviting you to the bar on Tuesday nights. Those, those who are, the enemies are looking at that vision and saying, man, I can't get in that way. It sets them off in another direction because they can't gain margin in your life. When you said, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve, and I'm going to serve, and I'm going to serve, and I'm going to bring people into Jesus, then guess what? You're not tempted with the same things anymore. Like, it, there's, there, there's different, you got, do you understand vision creates barriers? It allows you to run, and it keeps people, it, it, it's a protection agent in your life. It keeps you from making bad decisions, and it keeps bad decisions from even approaching you at times. Proverbs twenty nine eighteen in the King James says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Your vision keeps you healthy, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he, blessed is he, joyful is he. Your vi- the vision God has put in your heart has keep, keeps you healthy. I want to read the vision that we've all read so many times and we declare in, man, there's so many, so many good portions of the word. Luke 4, 18 and 19 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation this time. And he has anointed me to be the hope for the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted, and fresh eyes for the blind. And, he, and to preach to prisoners that they are set free. I have come to share this message, the message of jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has become. Guys, this is our vision for today. Jesus, when this was written initially by the prophets, it was written about the year of jubilee. The year of jubilee would come, and it was every seven years, and it would cancel debt. And it was a welcome relief. Just imagine if your car debt was canceled. Bring, if your mortgage debt was canceled, if that debt on what, the, whatever big purchase you have, it's your student debt, just canceled. It'd be a joyful time, right? Jesus canceled all debts forever for all time. And so whatever mess you got yourself into, the forgiveness of the cross, the, the, the time of Jubilee, it's not just the year, it's the time of Jubilee has come so that we can be righteous again. See, there, there was no chance of that. In the year of Jubilee back, it could only cancel the physical debts. Jesus is the only one that can cancel the debt you owe to God. And so when the accuser comes to you and says, because here's what's going to happen, you're going to get a vision, and the accuser is going to come, and he's going to say, yeah, but God wouldn't use you. Yeah, but you, you don't have this right. Yeah, you all have flaws. You understand you have weaknesses in your life, and God says, I'm going to use those weaknesses so, so the world would see me. He didn't say, I'm going to use your perfection. He didn't say, perfect yourself. He, he, he said that in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. God is using every bit of you. And so we've got to realize, there's a, there's, um, we, we, we've got to realize what God is doing right now. Man, I so bad want to share with you about in Colossians. And if you just grab this, this, this portion of scripture that we're going to speak over our lives every single week that the Lord has enabled me to bring the same freedom that I've experienced, to set at liberty those who are captive, to bring a new perspective to those who are blind. You may have people in your life that are blind to Jesus, and God is calling you to bring Jesus to them, bring new perspectives, to bring freedom from fear. The church, the guys, the church, what's the vision of the church? It's real simple, it's you. The vision of this church is you that you would hear God's voice, that you would have vision for your life, that you would believe for your community. The vision for this church is this community, Delano, and your neighborhoods, this neighborhood and your neighborhood. We're gonna do group missions to this neighborhood. God said, I started dreaming about something else, and God said, what have you done with what we've given you? With what I've given you? And what he's given us is Delano. and, And that's not like, that's not like, oh yeah, we got to help the people of Delano. It's like, no, there are incredible people out there that we get to help, that we get to bless, that we get to bring into part of our family. And if we move on from here, we're going to miss the blessing. 
And just like I would have missed Tiff if I hadn't committed to the thing that was right in front of me, I'm not going to make that mistake. And so we're going to commit to Delano, but what about your neighborhood? What about your neighbors? What about the people that live to the right and to the left of you and down the street and the kids? We have a, we have a mailbox literally right across the street from our front yard. Our entire neighbor, every day, neighborhood, the, the 15 people around us, 20 people around us have to come right to our front yard. I'm going to leverage that sucker. I'm, you know, there needs to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one of these, a stack of these things right there. You guys need to know about our church. If we don't, if we quit driving into our houses and shutting the door and doing life in our gated, in our gates where it's safe and we start just caring about our neighborhood, God will use you to reach your neighbors. God will use you to reach your family members. It might start a fight at Thanksgiving. It might stir up some controversy. But I'm telling you, the light of Christ can shine brightly through each one of us. And if we are going to be the church that the world needs, we are have to be people empowered to go out and do it. Why are you in business? To shine brightly for the Lord. Why are you in school? To shine brightly for the Lord. I don't wish any of you, you know, um, the period of, that you're in college and high school, you have the most ability to be influential in, in your peer group. You get pulled out of high school, you will fight the rest of your life to be in front of hundreds or thousands of people. But right now, you can shine brightly. There's vision for you. You can change atmospheres. One person. The best, well, well you're taking back Wednesday nights, Tim. What, we have soccer practice. If your kid's any good, your coach will re- reschedule. <laughs> right? I'm telling you what, if I'm a coach and I got my three best players and they said I'm going to Derek's youth group on Wednesday night, I don't have practice that night. I'm going to say, how about we get out of the last hour of school and we practice early so you can make it to your youth group. And I'm telling you, the world will bend to the vision that you have for your family. We have to quit being the church, the church that bends to the world. And it's like, well, I mean, if you could do youth group at 11 o'clock on every other Tuesday night, I could be there. No. Your kids need the life of Christ in them. They need these youth leaders that have committed their lives to speak the gospel in them, to stand for them, because without that, I couldn't be who I am. Man, Dave, where's my off ramp? Don't get me talking about it. (laughs) What's it look like when you have vision for your day, when you have vision for your walk with God and it doesn't just fit into your schedule? When you have vision for your relationships, for your marriage, for your dating relationships, changes who you look at as options. What's it look like when you have visions for your household, visions for your neighborhood, visions for your finances? So many people think it's hard to tithe, but tithe becomes the last thing they think about. It's not hard when it's the first thing you think about. What's it look like when you have vision for your family, for your school, for your community? I believe that in 2021, the church has this window. The church has this window to introduce Jesus in massive ways. The whole world has been sold a bunch of baloney. They've been sold fear and they've been sold shame and they've been sold contentment and division and those are the opposite of what God wants to bring into this world through you unity can be reintroduced through you faith and fear can be broken faith can be introduced through you they can experience love I'm telling you you might go knock on that neighbor's door and ask them if they want a hug and it might bring them to their knees because it's been that long since they've seen somebody that honestly didn't want anything but just to love on him. Jesus is the answer for everything we face. And you are the partner that he's picked. This vision isn't small and it's not a task list. You know, we, we want to make vision nice and neat and put it into a task list and say, when I'm 19, I'm going to do this. And when I'm 20, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And that's not what vision is. 
Vision isn't a, it isn't a list of things you will do. It is a commitment to the call of God on your life. And as God reveals that to you, you know, Tiff made a, I shared this in the 9 o'clock service, Tiff made a, she went to ORU with a counseling degree and she made a task list or a list of everything she didn't want, to, she didn't want in a husband. I, she, she was going through her counseling classes and they said, well, if he's gone through this, he'll struggle with this. And if he's gone through this, he'll struggle with this. She, so she made a list. And then when God highlighted me as the person that she was to be interested in, she's like, but God, he hits everything on my checklist in the wrong ways. I said I didn't want somebody from that kind of background, and he's from that kind of background. I said I didn't want somebody who, and he's done and everything. And I was like, hey, I'm your checklist soulmate. But the reality is, God is, the vision that God had for her was not, able to be contained into a checklist because it didn't factor in Jesus. Her checklist said, if, 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 if this had happened in your life, then you'd be broken in this way. But Jesus is the redeemer. And my experience with Father God is he redeems everything. Not just some things. Everything I surrender to him, he'll redeem. If this is your first Sunday at New Life Covenant Church, I hope that you know a little bit about us. We run hard. We go after Jesus. We love each other in incredible ways. We want to get to know you because we want to stand with you through everything you go through. And we want to bring Jesus and remind you and help lift your hands as you go through it.